I, I love it, man. You know, but Corey Fuller was a damn good player. The Florida State had a ten-year NFL career. You know, after his time at Florida State, and has been one of the best, you know, high school coaches in the state of Florida. Um, you know, since he, you know, left the NFL. Um, you know, just that video alone, and you know how he can motivate and how he connects with these young kids is is going to be phenomenal. Um, you know, having a a local guy that's tied to Florida State, and you know has been around the the area for as long as he has, and I, I'm I'm pumped about this one. Hey guys, it's Terrence Nan. You listening to Hear the Spear presented by No Game Day. Go Dolls. Hey, what's up? This is Peter Ward, aka E Dub, in the house. So we listening to Hear the Spear presented by No Game Day. Go live. Go Nose. Hi, this is Charlie Ward, and you're listening to Hear the Spear, Go Nose. This is Terrell Fuckley. You're listening to Hear the Spear, presented by No Game Day. No bloody. But perhaps better known as the greatest corner to ever step on a football field, Dion Primetime Sanders. The great Dion Sanders, my brother. What's going on, man? I could, I could wake up to that greedy every day, man. That was awesome. Hello, those fans. This is former Seminole Derek Brooks, and you're listening to Hear the Spear, presented to you by No Game Day. James Wilder Jr. What's going on, James? Thanks for having me on. SSOD, Florida State or Die, and go no. William Barnon Floyd. Gentlemen, what's up? And what is happening, guys? This is Logan Rump. Hear the Spear, presented to you by No Game Day. We are here live. Thursday evening here in Tallahassee down near Bradenton. We got a little bit to talk about this week. Not a whole lot on the docket this evening, but there's some juicy things that just happened a couple of hours ago that we will discuss with some Florida State staff additions along with some recruiting we'll go through. We'll talk a little bit about the spring, just an early couple thoughts on it heading into there now that a lot of the early enrollees and the transfers are in. Transfers also had a lot of interviews this week. We spoke with a lot of those guys, so we'll discuss that. Where will Jameis go? And there's a few NFL players. Check it out. Playing the AFC NFC Championship. What's going on here? Check it out. Oh my God. Check it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know about that. I feel like the avatar could be better, Nate. Check it Got out. A nice Bumble. little fist bump in there. The bonus yeah. buddies. Boom. Is that you and Dustin fist bumping in the yep. picture? Yep. I can Bam. respect it. I, I don't respect it really, though. <laughs> you know that I, I sent the uh, boneless buddies, the, the girls that were watching, uh, that watched the show, they were at the basketball game. I threw them some uh, some merch, but it's not boneless buddies merch. You're not even giving your fans merch yet. And I'm but I, I, I've already started working on the, uh, you know, the, the trailer, but how long was it before you actually put out? No game day merch, what, 32 years or yeah. how long it's been? Do I look that old? Do I look while. that old? It did take a while. There's a whole Did supply chain here, and yeah. we've got yeah. to figure out logistics and who's going to ship our stuff. There, there's we're, just we're, a lot. We're doing this. It. We're doing this uh, uh, for, for real. You know, this is going to be what catapults no game day into <laughs> and, and probably global phenomenon. You know, that's right. It's going to be quality. You know, we're not just going to pawn off 30 cent shirts for 10 bucks like you do. Yeah, we're not going to go buy well, we're, well, we're not selling gilded t shirts and big. Oh, here you go. We're not selling them. We're not selling what's the, them. What's the return on investment on that, Logan? Uh, giving you fans the chance to actually show off our brand and show support to us that they want to do. And they're free. We send the shirts off for free. So if you just send a DM, yeah. That should tell you the quality of the shirt. Ours, are gonna be the same. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're gonna be they're gonna be branded <laughs> up. But uh, let's uh, start getting Hoodies. to some FSU talk before we start losing every underwear. Follower. Underwear? Oh my god, Jesus! <laughs> yeah, you have to have underwear after eating boneless wings, honestly, because yeah. they're awful and you'd be. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> let's go into a lot of stuff here. As always, you can listen to podcasts on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify. Make sure you hit that like button. We had over like 15, maybe 20,000 views and listens last week. So I don't know what we're doing right. I don't know what's happening, but appreciate everybody hanging out with us this evening on a kind of a slower week. But we do have a little to discuss this evening for sure, because mm -hmm. we have a former, let me start off with saying here, the Spear alum, one of the founding fathers of here, the Spear, Corey Fuller. 
There's a report today from Allison uh, Posey, if I'm saying that correctly, right, Dustin? I, yeah. Have you seen? I probably should have had this pulled up. I'll pull it up in a second. From Allison Posey here in town, uh, reporting that Florida State alum and NFL player Corey Fuller is expected to join Florida State staff. It's not really confirmed yet by the school, not fully public yet, but it's a report that he'll be joining in some regard of helping recruiting, most likely maybe a director of player personnel. We'll see if that comes into fruition. But that is the report that came out earlier this evening. Thoughts on that? I mean, I've got a lot so, to talk about it. So but I think it's does, great. Does that mean Chuck Cantor's out? You know, I guess that's what that means. I would um, think there's most likely something going on there. I, I love it, man. You know, Corey Fuller was a damn good player. The Florida State had a ten-year NFL career. You know, after his time at Florida State, and has been one of the best you know, high school coaches in the state of Florida, um, you know, since he, you know, left the NFL, um, you know, just that video alone and, you know, how he can motivate and how he connects with these young kids is, is going to be phenomenal. Um, you know, having a, a local guy that's tied to Florida state and, you know, has been around the, the area for as long as he has. And I, I'm, I'm pumped about this one and, you know, it, it, it's a W versus you know Deion Sanders. He's trying to get Corey on his staff now for you know two two years now or three years, however long he's been, you know, quote unquote head coach. So you know that's a nice little uh, you know response on on that one. So it's it's huge for FSU in terms of for for me, you know, a representation of FSU and. Guy has been there for the dynasty year, and also just you know, you can tell he's a guy that takes no shit. So <laughs> I'm excited for it. For sure, you're you're bringing back a former Seminole who wasn't just great in Tallahassee, but now he wants to come back and and make the program great again. And you know, he's got that NFL experience and just so many ties to the Panhandle. Mm-hmm. Coach for a little bit at FAMU. Had a couple stints at, at Gadsden County, even back when it was called East Gadsden, and also coached at Godby, graduated from Rickards, like you said, Native Tallahassee native. So just a lot of ties to this area. And, you know, over the last couple of recruiting cycles, there's been some guys that, that Florida State has missed here, probably the big one being uh, Terry and Arnold. And maybe that can help them just take back control of, of the 850. Yeah, no, his presence here. At least locally, that's the first thing I think of, at least recruiting-wise. You know, Florida State has had some slip-ups in the past on not being able to keep some really good talent here in town. Mm-hmm. And I think this really helps in that factor, along with also Florida State bringing in an alum, just alum alone bringing in, you know, a guy that had a big-time presence during his time at Florida State, went off to the NFL, had a successful career, went into coaching after that, and has done a really good – good like time for himself in this town uh, and has really big time respect and you know his time at godby too luckily whenever we had him on the pod and he was a co-host you know i spent a lot of time with him over there at godby and got to see him coach and then whenever he went over to east gads and spent some time there and just got to see what he was working with facility wise and how he was trying to improve these high school uh players develop them and be there for them i mean i remember watching him he'd take about four or five uh, young men to practices and then he would be telling all right which house are you going to which house over here I mean he was taking everybody back home just to kind of get these young men in a good spot and get them in pads and, and try to have them you know in a good direction uh, so seeing him you know behind the scenes and all that is it, it, really cool and I'm wondering how that will work being introduced into Florida State um, but just the whole storyline of what he's done here in Tallahassee has been phenomenal and we're hoping to have him on potentially for a pop-up pod tomorrow before he does join Florida state staff to kind of discuss, uh, you know, what made him decide going into this, because, you know, we talked about earlier last week and, you know, he said he's focused a lot on family too. And his son has a really bright future in baseball and, you know, he wants to stay local. And so I, I, he's big on high school and and coaching high school. So I'm interested to see what kind of role he's really going to play while at Florida state, but it also goes to show Mike Norvell, man. I mean, he's, he's trying to make these moves, as much as possible, not only on the field, but off the field. 
And, you know, I think this is an excellent hire for Florida State. And like you said, Nate and Delu, I mean, that video alone of him out in the rain, he brought his players on a bus out to where he used to live and talk the true stuff, the real stuff about what he went through to grow, grow up, mature and develop his own self into being an NFL caliber talent. So um, I'm looking forward to hopefully, you know, we're texting back and forth here, hopefully be able to get him on here to discuss and talk, you know, tell you guys a little bit more information, what he can give and get to know him a little bit better, but I'm happy for him just as a friend, happy for coach Fuller. I love, uh, I, 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 again, I love the move, man. You know, it's um, strong, strong move. So, Another former Hear the Spear alum doing big things. We just get used to it around here. <laughs> we, it's, hard to, it's hard to tie him down. It's hard to tie him down. Our first pod, you know, we were over at Corey's house, and we didn't know what in the sure, hell you want to talk we about were doing. That. Well, we didn't know what in the hell we were doing. We had no idea what we were doing. But uh, Corey Who'd you bring on for, for that episode? Uh, prime time. <laughs> We just want to see what uh, Nate's going to say. But uh, it seems like the Twitter world in, likes in, it. In order to keep the relationship with him good, I, I will uh, refrain from talking about Deion Sanders and giving my <laughs> my thoughts. Yeah, the two are very close. The two are definitely very close. Um, Turn them down, though. Yeah, yeah. It seems to be so. And he just tweeted a couple of minutes ago saying that uh, he's kind of confirmed it and is thanking everybody for con- – everyone congratulating him. So uh, I'm interested to see literally, you know, what that role is going to look like for him. I'm, I'm definitely excited and interested to see. So we'll keep an eye on that and hopefully be able to talk to him soon. Steve, like, like I told you, Steve, like I told you on Facebook, I may be old, but at least I'm not bald for premature balding like you are. Damn. Jeez, Steve, you can let him talk to you like that. Jeez. Yeah. So uh, Steven here commented, Nate is so old. Mm, that was personal. And, and and we gotta say happy birthday to Nate too. This is kind of yeah, belated, man. but birthday on Wednesday. How's it feeling yesterday? Like how's it how are you dealing with it? Things how old are you good? Now, Nate? I am forty four years old, dude. Damn. That's crazy. That's crazy. Damn, like that. well, I just mean that's crazy. I know, what's crazy, crazy about man. it. <laughs> yeah. What what's crazy is that like I'm forty four. Yeah, you know, I I I, looked, I I don't look a day above twenty, um, but my body feels Sean. like I'm, but my body feels like I'm sixty. So. <laughs> <laughs> All those boneless wings, man. No, 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 no. I don't think it's enough boneless. <laughs> Not enough. If you ate more, then you'd look a little bit better. You need to be eating more. You need to put on the diet. Nah, you know, since, since the since I had the runner last year, man, I just you know, that extra, you know, energy levels mm. hasn't come back. Mm. I feel that. No, I, there was a comment in here too, talking about Corey Fuller knowing how to coach too. And that also brings an aspect. Does this only develop him into growing into becoming eventually taking a role on, on field coaching that really depends on him and what he wants to do. But mm-hmm. like I said, highly, highly respect. And it had potential offers from all different kinds of places across the country. I mean, we're talking a lot of places, but Tallahassee is home to him and really to his heart. I've seen it firsthand, man, how much he it, cares. It, it's, about clear he likes, it, it's clear he likes to work with, with, you know, young guys. So, you know, whether it's on field or off field or, you know, I think this 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 role fits him of player development. You know, it takes mm-hmm. a lot on and off field to develop a kid in college. So, I think that this role fits him quite well. I agree. Yeah, and I just think you know he's a he's a leader of men. You see the work that he's done over there um, in the high schools in Tallahassee, and it's just impressive. He get he gets a lot of guys to the collegiate level, and he's focusing on the stuff off the field as well as on the field, and he's just an impressive hire. For the staff, I think it can only be a, a benefit, a positive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Nate, you probably really like it. You really got to see him play, mm-hmm. but bringing that, you know, he he's seen how it works. You know, he, he he's seen the hard coaching, the tough coaching, the grit. 
I mean, you bring that now in, in the Tallahassee and you bring that the Florida State's program and the more, I, I mean, I'm, I'm really interested to see how, how things work with uh, Corey in there. It's going to be, it's going to be fun. Uh, let's talk about some interviews this week. We got to speak to a lot of guys, a lot of guys and new transfers. And one of them actually being today, Trey Benson, Oregon transfer running back. He kept it kind of short a little bit. You know, he talked about his development from his injury and how he rehabbed it and he came back. Um, and he said he kind of has a chip on his shoulder. He kind he was answering one question. He kind of got fired up and he admitted, he said, I'm, I'm kind of fired up right now. Answer these questions because I feel like an underdog. He, he stated that he doesn't expect to come in as a primary back, but I am going to compete. But, mm-hmm. you know, I think, he saw the Twitters. He saw the, maybe the discord messages. He of saw course. everything. So he's he, he knows what's going on, but I thought today he really kept it about as good as he could and said, you know, I'm here to compete, not expect to be primary back, but I feel a hundred percent. And he's been hundred percent for a while now, and he's going to be a full go full participant in the spring. But I thought that was a pretty good uh, interview today from Trey Benson. No, yeah, well, it's going to be a uh, year two off the injury. So, you know, it's going to be better than last year for him personally. Um, uh, like I said last week, man, I don't think FSU makes this move without, you know, vetting the whole thing. So, you know, I, I know some people on Twitter were just bitching and moaning about it because of the injury. Are you surprised? But, no, not surprised at all. But, you know, it. the kid has tools, man, you know, and, and – Let's really not focus on on the injury itself. You know, the recovery of things is so much different than it was even five or eight years ago. So let's wait and see. Uh, Then we also got to talk with Johnny Wilson, uh, transfer wide receiver from Arizona State. He talked about really what I came out of it was his physicality. He likes to play um, nasty. He likes to play blocking he likes to help out his teammates he talked about you know i'll do anything if i can get my running back down the field for a 70 yard touchdown i'll do anything but he really talked about his advantages with his height but you know he said really the biggest thing with him is coming in and trying to make an impact and you know bring a more versatile kind of player to florida state's offense from what they've had in the past and so uh, i thought that was a pretty a pretty good interview from him uh we got to hear from deuce span who, you know, really, really was short with things, kind of kept it straight up and stuff like that. But you could tell, you know, he's still learning Tallahassee. But he'd mentioned, though, being around in Florida and back near home, his family is able to come drive up now only about six hours uh, instead mm-hmm. of 36 hours, which were they, they were traveling and they don't like flying. So they were driving uh, to these games up there in Eugene, Oregon. So a lot, lot, lot more closer. So he said that well, he wasn't in Eugene, and, Oregon. He was in Illinois. I mean, I'm think I'm going back to Trey Benson. I'm thinking all about Trey Benson right now. Um, <laughs> but going back to yeah, greedy Vance. There's so many that I couldn't even keep up with. But um, greedy, I greedy. I thought was a pretty decent interview. He was just kind of short with things, but he does. He is excited about helping out this wide receiver room. I mean, if you think about it, that whole thing is revamped like crazy. Revamped. I, I thought it was interesting too. Uh, Wilson talking about how, you know, he kind of insinuated that he kind of initiated the contact somewhere at FSU, you know, put out that yeah. olive branch to, to start and kind of got the whole ball rolling in, in his favor. So, we still talking about Wilson? <laughs> we can talk about anybody now. It's open floor. I just remember one of the quotes I read from Wilson talking about the the tour of duty and how it's kind of, I guess, maybe shocked him a little bit with how much they're doing. And just, Logan, you probably have the full quote, but he was just talking about how intense it's been so far and he already feels like it's paying off. Yeah, no, he mentioned on here, I'll, I'll read it, but he said, he talked about the strength and conditioning program, Coach Storms, and how it was kind of a wake up call the first week but he feels like he's already faster and stronger than he's ever been. And, you know, a lot of these new transfers from what I've been told, you know, kind of was a little bit of a wake up call because, you know, coach storms and they're, 
his staff too are really, really strict, definitely at this time of year. But it seems like, you know, these guys from what they were working with in the past, this is kind of a whole different realm. This is a different kind of monster that they're getting introduced in. And I think it was tough for a, a few of them, but Johnny Wilson talked about it and was public about it that, you know, that was tough the first week, but he, <laughs> he really has high respect for coach storms and, and what they're doing. And, you know, he's able to see improvements in his body, his speed so far. And I mean, he just got here. I mean, just got here. So, you know, give it some time to, and, and see how these guys um, work into. So, yeah, I, I'm anxious to see how some of these, Chancellor's look in spring, you know, mm-hmm. that's when we're going to get the first real look at him. Yeah, no, you really get a first. Well, I'm, I'm excited just to kind of get there and see how these guys fit with their teammates. I mean, these, this is another handful, more than a handful of guys that are building now relationships, even with the guys that are already, have been on the teams, veteran guys that have new newcomers on that are the same age, have been at other programs and how that aligns. And we've seen that it's worked out pretty well. Um, definitely last season. I wonder if that will continue with this new batch coming in. Um, but it's been cool to hear some of these transfers talk about, you know, they played NCAA 14. They, they played with Florida state all the time and they knew of the war chant uh, and they knew of how Doke is and how loud it can be, and they are extremely excited about coming in here and playing. Um, and everybody kind of has a good, has a pretty good uh, vibe to them from what I uh, got out of it this week from some of these transfer players. And definitely for some of them wanting to be back closer to home, um, it played a big, big deal for some of them because a lot of these guys were talents. Um near this area do span was the one who mentioned that his mom and cousins are Florida state fans. So he's, he mentioned that mom was really happy about him uh, picking to go over to Florida state and Trey, Trey Benson also mentioned too, that he models his game after former FSU running back Cam Akers, who's currently fighting for a win to go to the Super Bowl. Um, so and that's interesting because yeah. Benson is originally from Mississippi, just like Cam. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, well, Cam is a, Mississippi legend, dude. Yeah, cool. you know, a lot For of people sure. think a lot of people think he's the best high school player in the history of that state. So, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of players that look up to Cam Akers. Cam Akers or Luke Altmyer, go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything else worth noting on from earlier. Uh, Bless Harris was the one, the transfer offensive lineman, who mentioned that he was playing NCAA 14 with Florida State a ton. Caden Lyles, who I think a lot, not a lot of people are talking about enough of, definitely the beard for sure, but he mentioned mm-hmm. that he and Jordan Travis had been already been, been putting in a lot of work on the field. He felt like they've already got a strong connection um, and they have really good chemistry early on. So, and Atkins told him that he'll be starting over. Uh, he'll be not starting, you know, week one, but at least, you know, gonna that's be his position expected to be at his position at center. Yeah. Once camp begins, uh, but I, don't I think fully lot, expect uh, him to be the starter <clears throat> fully expected. So what do you think Smith moves inside to guard or does he get bumped to the second team? I, I think with, um, with that move, I think that it moves him over, which I think would be a good move for him, and he can always be the backup for uh, right. for center. You know, you know, as long as you know, Lyle can stay healthy. You know, that's you know, keeping it real. That's been the question mark with his college career so far as health. But you know, if he can stay healthy, you know, he's played really well and he's played for. You know, one of the best offensive line programs in the country. So, you know, got to be excited about that move. Mm -hmm. And then one last thing here, Tatum Bethune also joined the media for an interview and really talked about his chemistry that he already has and the relationships built inside the locker room with a lot of the players, which we know of and kind of expected that um, and heard a lot of things about how, how those relationships were already built before he arrived in Tallahassee, but noted on that a few times during his interview and said that they already feel 
extremely close with one another. So it wasn't really, you know, an awkward thing coming into this locker room. And he talked about Randy Shannon and said that it was a no brainer to pick Florida state when Randy Shannon was promoted to linebackers coach. Mm -hmm. So, um, some good quotes there from the the transfers. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Thanks Randy. Appreciate it, Randy. Khalil Young is, Go ahead. That, that, that could have been damn good last year for UCF, man. That's a mm-hmm. tackling machine. Yeah, that's a good coup you for line, FSU. You line that up with Deloach, too, who really got better and improved this last season mm-hmm. and turned into a really nice tackler and made plays. I mean, I think it's a great – those two on the field at the same time is going to be really successful for Florida mm-hmm. State's defense and that linebacker court. And he brings experience, too. Khalil Young is asking if you guys could pick two teams from the Pac-12 and Big Ten to put on our schedule, who would they be? Khalil says my personal pick would be Penn State, Ohio State, USC, and Washington. Of course, when we are good. I'm again. going um, <laughs> like that last. And I'm thank you for the ten bomb. Bit. I'm going Indiana, and um... he wants Walt Bell. <laughs> <laughs> you want to you want to be Walt Bell? <laughs> I'm going Indiana, um, and no, no, I'm kidding. I, I was gonna go for easy wins, but nah. Uh, games that I would like to see FSU play is always USC. No, I, I, I've always you know watched them from afar. Always you know, liked USC. I think that's that'd be a fun game. Um, and then. Um, I think Arizona State would be a fun stadium to visit just to decide who has the best co-eds. You know, we could finally maybe get an answer in person on that. Um, well, we got our answer. Look where Johnny Wilson transferred to. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yep. No, I, I kind of – I don't know, man. Really, Pac-12, there's – Utah, you know, Utah, you know, they're a burgeoning program. It would be fun to, to play them. Uh, you know, Big Ten, always Michigan and in Ohio State, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I've got to go. I've got to yeah. go with Ohio State, and then Nebraska, so Chuba Purdy can get the work. Whoa, then U- yeah. USC mm-hmm. for sure, just because you know it's an iconic program. And then I got to go with Oregon, just because of the Norvell ties there with Dan Lanning, Dillingham. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got meatball. There's there's some other people too. So it would be fun to see. It would be fun to see everyone match up. Yeah, I think we're in the same Pac-12. I got Oregon just for got to make up for that 2014. And like the comment here from Khalil, the donation saying once Florida State's back, give me Oregon, and then USC. Mm-hmm. I think would be absolutely fun one to at least attend. Hopefully, it'd be a home and home. And then if I'm going Big Ten, well, you know, Lincoln gonna... Riley, there'll be no defense, so you won't have to there worry about that much. Absolutely. You run all over them. And then you, mm-hmm. I'm going to go Michigan and then Penn State. Penn State, when I was younger, I watched – what bowl was that, Nate? I was young. It was a bowl game. I think Florida State lost that game. Someone no. – That was a long the, time ago. That that was, was that a, a blockbuster. Yes, it was a win. That was, that the, was, blockbuster. Win, yeah. that was the blockbuster bowl. Or okay. are you talking about well, the Orange I'm thinking, Bowl? No, no. I'm thinking Orange. Was it an Orange Bowl? You're talking about the BCS win when they played Penn State? That was a loss. Yeah. In overtime. Yeah, that was a loss. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. then they, they played uh Penn State in the Blockbuster Bowl in the in the mid nineties down in Fort Fort Lauderdale. I think it was Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. Uh Knowles for Life, Dad Gummet says if Nate and Dustin were to eat real wings, they would have a good looking wing bump avatar. I agree. I agree. Well, uh, I, I, I think that <laughs> they have no comment back at you. They can't fight I, I, back I, at you. I, I think it's unfortunate that your palate's not as developed as ours is, and that you don't enjoy delicacies like we do. So that's what I think. Yeah. Yep. I don't think Benson's a short yardage guy. The guy had pre knee injury. Pre knee injury was a ten five guy. He's you know, he, he is a bigger back, but he had really good long speed. So I wouldn't pigeonhole him as a power back. I think that's, that's more, Williams. That's it. But I think that's TJ Williams. I think that, you know, Benson, you know, was a guy that could, you know, one cut and go. And, and once he got in the secondary, there's not going to, 
would be a lot of guys that can outrun him. So, you know, I think he's more of a a, a traditional game breaker type type back. This can help us lead into the spring, and this brings up a good question here from Carl. Who do you guys think, transfer wise, will make the biggest impact? And I'm guessing this means this upcoming season. Which transfer, if you were to pick Tatum right Bethune. now, Tatum Bethune. Okay, that's what I'm going with. You know, a guy who, you know, like I said a few minutes ago, you know, tackling machine, like you said, Logan. Um, mm-hmm. Played very very well. Um, was was recruited by Randy Shannon. Has played for him before, so he knows you know how he coaches. Um, you know there is a just a massive need there. Um, I, I think that it, he's another guy that kind of fits a four two five. You know personnel for FSU can play in space really good with his run fit. So. I, I think that's going to be – that's my early early prediction of a guy who's going to be the most instant, immediate impact, however you want to say it. Yeah, it's hard to pinpoint one or the other, but I'll go with either Micah Pittman or Winston Wright just because they're both veteran receivers that have been productive at prior stops coming into Florida State. Obviously, mm-hmm. that is a room that needs someone that can come in and immediately make an impact. I feel like Winston Wright is probably that guy, but I could I see the same type of qualities with Pittman's game. It's just he's been banged up a little bit. So as long as he can come back healthy, I think he'll be a, a pretty good tool for Florida State. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Surprise! No one's picking. I'm picking Jared Verse. I think you lose Jermaine Johnson and Keir Thomas. I do like Florida State's. You know, Fuller. You've got Fuller there. Um, you've got McLendon, but Jared Verse coming in, I think, is. Is going to be great for FSU. Definitely in the pass rush, which Florida State has struggled with years prior, uh, not having Jermaine and Cure there before that. But you know, Florida State got to keep that pass rush coming because that the only way to help those defensive backs that really struggled last season, mm-hmm. majority of the year. So I'm going to go Jared Verse. I think he brings a different kind of factor with speed and getting around and can fly around the field too. Not just only in pass rush, but if you need a tackle need a big time one there in that fourth quarter that just needs to seal the game, then uh, I'm going to go first there for impact guy. Yeah. that I think the, you know, the discussion is that there's a handful of guys, you know, these aren't just one or two impact transfers that transfers that FSU took in. These It's a legitimate argument to look at Bethune or Wright or verse or Pittman or Wilson or Lyles, you know, there's you know, there's a, a legitimate discussion for quite a few of these guys that can help this team very quickly. Mm-hmm. Who do y'all think is going to be wide receiver one heading into camp? At least, well, let's talk spring. Let's not jump Fall all camp the way into or, or spring camp. Spring. Or- let's stick with spring for this discussion tonight. But if we're talking spring stuff here, well, based off who- experience and everything, heading into spring, I would say Malik McLean will be number one, but um not not a knock on him. I, I, I do think that a guy like Wright could take that number one spot. But I think I think McLean's just gonna take a next step. So mm-hmm. I pretty much agree with that. McLean is one of the guys that's still in the room right now that aren't going to be phased out mm-hmm. by these incoming transfers. He still has the talent and still a lot of room in his game to grow, especially only being going into his second year at Florida State. He he's gonna be he's gonna be a good one down the line. You saw those flashes last year. Once he starts to put it all together consistently, mm-hmm. take it to the next level, it's gonna be a beast. He's yeah. a, he's a, he's already got the your desire to block and you know has that physicality <laughs> yep. there. So Did, you know, against Notre Dame. Yeah. Really really wanna see what those you know, quick quick out screens look like with McLean and, and, and Wilson, you know, blocking to uh to a Jaga, uh to a Jakai Douglas or a uh Woodson Wright, you know, that you know, those could be big time plays. Yeah, I think McLean's gonna make a big time jump and I wish he had a little bit more targets last season, but man, I think too an X factor in the red zone, you can use both of these guys, put them out wide, left and right, and you can 
use that to your advantage with Johnny Wilson along with McLean too. I think of Terry Wilson, I mean, he's, he's going to play a big time factor too. And that starting lineup, we're going to see too how that, how it affects these transfers coming in, you know, playing time. I mean, someone's got to leave, right? Delu someone's you got to thin out eventually, maybe, right? Maybe even more than one. We'll just kind of see how it plays out. But when you're yeah. bringing in, when you're bringing in four new scholarship players, you've got to expect there's that there's going to be some attrition from the guys towards the bottom of that unit that didn't really get a chance to contribute last year because mm-hmm. now they're just even further down the depth chart. Yeah. And it's the transfer portal era. So yeah. it is, it is. It definitely makes it to where the off season isn't so long anymore. Now it's kind of dead and it's kind of quiet right now, but it does allow at least for a team that doesn't have a bowl game. We talk about it all the time, Dustin, on the phone, but you know, now this transfer portal adds in a little bit more of entertainment and content. Um, ideas. You this talk to the, me about it on the phone. I just sit there and I'm like, when is he going to shut up? Wow. That's rude. <laughs> put your camera on, put your makeup on. Thomas is uh, asking here, and I'm not sure if I agree with this. I know. The, I don't think I agree. Let's talk about the O-line. What's our average in the weight room and strength? Some of these boys need meat on them bones, says Thomas from Facebook. I'm not I'd sure if I fully agree, at least with some of these youngins coming, man. I don't know if Sap needs much more. I mean, he's gonna he's gonna gain muscle and do all that, but the young we kids talked are, about, a lot are of this, about cleaning this. their body up. You know, they're gonna have to change their body structure and learn how to lift correctly to prevent injury, and you know, lift that's focused on on football. Yeah, but Florida State doesn't have a you know, they're not tiny. You know, their offensive linemen aren't tiny, so. Uh, you know, I, I think everyone's so enamored with Bama and, and, and George's offensive line, which is rightfully so. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it's going to take time to get there, man. And just to look at the guys on the roster coming back that have started games for Florida State, Robert Scott, 6'5", 3'12". Mm-hmm. Bree Smith, 6'3", 280. He's probably the smallest guy on yep. the roster. But at the same time, he he's a pretty damn good player. Um, you got Bless Harris, a transfer coming in, 6'5", 315. Caden Lyles, 6'3", 315. Rod Orr, true freshman last year, 6'6", 309. Thomas Schrader, who has started before in his career, injured last year, 6'5", 305. Lloyd Willis is 6'7", 327. Kanaya Charlton, 6'5", 355. Mm-hmm. Gibbons is 6'5", 321. Darius Washington, 6'4", 294. Like you said, these aren't little guys. And, and, yeah. and, and the game has changed, man. You know, the, the days of 6'5", 340-pound linemen are, is over. You know, you, you look at the draft the last several years, you know, the guys are 6'5", 6'6", 300. You know, it, it's just a different game than it was before. So, no, I, I don't think we're going to see just massive – Huge guys. You look at, you know, some of the guys. You know, Lucas Simmons. You know that we talked about last week. Who's, you know, six eight, two eighty five. You know, he's probably going to be a, you know, a six eight, three hundred and twenty pound tops guy. You know, it's just the way the game has changed. Yeah. Well, give it a little bit more time too with Coach Storms and do his thing. But I think you're right, Nate. The game has definitely changed. Quite a bit, but you also don't want to screw yourself too. Looking at Georgia and Alabama players, don't do that to yourself. It's not, it's not fair. Kind of what's going on. You look at Wisconsin too, but um, I'm excited. I'm, I, I might be for the position group of the future right now, and it's crazy to think this, but I'm extremely excited to watch Florida State's offensive line the next couple of years progress. I mean. It's already been doing its thing, and we've seen improvements. You can look at the stats. You can see the on-field play. You can see the time that Jordan Travis is getting a little bit more. I mean, you look at it, too, last year. I mean, Florida State's offensive line was hurt from shit, week two, week one. Mm-hmm. Those guys, and even Coach Aggins and Norvell talked about it. They talked about it after games, man. We are throwing in guys that haven't even played the damn position. They were hurt didn't, get, didn't Gibbons get hurt week one? I think 
think he was Dane. I thought Smith got hurt week one. Yeah, but like, there like was... Notre Dame didn't – wasn't there two offensive linemen that were in and out of the game just from from, from, from Jump Street? Yeah. And, and so you can argue, you know, you should have more depth there to bring in a guy that can play the role, yada, yada, yada. But this is where that offensive line class is coming in to fix that mm-hmm. and further progress. So, you know, time time does its thing, but um, definitely a good discussion uh, there on that topic. We got to see a video of Joshua Burrell, too. Um, I'm, I'm secretly excited for. Uh, really good frame. Didn't get to see him last season after injury. That was never disclosed by Florida State, never shared, but seemed like a leg injury and wasn't able to play uh, the season. But he gets back into the fold, too, since talking about wide mm-hmm. receivers of a guy that might emerge and come out. But it seems like he might be a potential, at least potentially near the end of the spring, a full go, if not near the beginning of it. But I'm excited about Joshua Brawl. A lot of uh, a lot of comparisons to a former old Nate that you probably know a lot of, Anquan Bolden physical go up for the ball can win his one-on-ones just you know maybe isn't a speedy kind of crisp route runner but he's physical when going up for that one-on-one grab much needed so Mm -hmm. yeah but he yeah he shared a video if you guys don't follow him go over to his twitter he shared a video of him getting back into getting back on the field and working so a good sign there for uh joshua joshua burrell um, uh, let's talk and hear uh, a little bit about some NFL stuff before we get into the AFC NFC championships. Sean Payton gone. Sean Payton's gone from New Orleans. Kind of a surprise there. It seems like he may be taking a network deal. Uh, looks like it might be Fox. We'll see what happens there. But kind of out of nowhere a little bit that he intended on retiring i guess he said that he's still trying to figure out things and he doesn't know what he'll do and that's what excites him but as we know Jameis winston's in town there in new orleans and that was the main reason for Jameis to pick new orleans was because of jane uh because of sean payton um there was a report that the steelers had more money on the table for Jameis, but he turned that down just to be with sean payton and things seemed like the beginning of the season before Jameis was hurt he was playing great and it seemed like it was that was a good decision by the former Noel Heisman winner. But now Sean Payton's gone. What does this do to Jameis? What could this do? I don't know. I, 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 mean, that, I'm, that, I'm all, I didn't, I'm see, I didn't he, see it coming. Honestly. I'm open arm. I'm open arms in Pittsburgh, baby. If that happens, you'll not, you won't see him on the show for a month. I'm going to be celebrating in that. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God. I'll, I'll bring my laptop to Cancun with me while I'm celebrating. No, but for real. Um, that's feeling like the number one option right now. I mean, depending on who the Saints hire as head coach, it kind of it looked like they were having some discussions um, with Byron Leftwich, or they got permission to interview him. But based on how everything's kind of unfolded so far, it looks like Leftwich is probably headed to Jacksonville. And after that, I mean, I don't even know who the Saints would go after. Maybe um, Eric – the offensive coordinator from the Chiefs. Eric B. Enemy. Yeah. I I I would stay if I was Jameis if they hired B. Enemy. Well, it's not up to him. He's a free agent. No. So hopefully they're not going to roll out Taysom Hill. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe Sean Payton got Taysom Hill paid and then retired? <laughs> Some sometimes the coach just loves a player, man. That's what, that's what happens. No, Carol, he's not. He's gonna he's gonna save us all the, the, the grief and the the horror of, of seeing his face. I don't want to so. ruin anybody's evening by showing my face. Yeah, Miss Carol's asking, is Dustin ever gonna show his face tonight? And now D- Dustin Dustin told us that he doesn't want to show his face tonight. He's had an emotional night and just doesn't wanna show his red. It's been rough, Probably man. Nice. Like I, w- I was, I was fighting for Nate to try and give him those shoes from Austin, and just the, the amount of effort I put in the last twenty four hours, I can't put my camera on tonight. I'll cry. Man, I, I don't even want to you know, talk about that. You know, 
I, I'm disgusted. You know, Austin just, <laughs> you know, I, he he deserved that loss to Georgia Tech mm-hmm. for for letting me down on my birthday. Fox and Porter play basketball. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm, I'm talking about too. What about the Denver Broncos? I see that he's there's a few sites on here listing that that might be a might be a landing spot for maybe Jameis. But I do think the number one spot, at least for fitting the offense, Mike Tomlin and Jameis. You've got a fresh new running back with Najee Harris. You've got a young quarterback with Jameis. It's reportedly Jameis had been got a good tight end that you know he likes to tight end. Mm-hmm. You know, Fryermuth is going to be probably a good player for them. Mm-hmm. Got couple great games. wide receiver targets. I wouldn't call it great, but a couple what? decent options. Get out of here. Don't I, Who is great? I don't know. Who's great? Deontay Johnson. He's not except great. For, he except for in the playoffs. In except, the playoffs. For, except in the playoffs. It's so stop. when it matters, he sucks. Okay. Who else? Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster. No shoulder. Keep going. The shoulder. The, he came back. Phenomenal fair, recovery fair. there. Chase, Chase Claypool. Claypool. Chase Claypool. Don't even start. Oh, now nah, I can't even listen. There's nothing about Claypool that's Ray Ray. Chase Claypool. Ray Ray? Walmart. Kelvin Benjamin. Ray Ray yeah. McLeod. <laughs> yeah. What did you stop? Stop. You're so lucky you have that camera off. You're smiling <laughs> as much <laughs> you as you can. Right. Yeah, exactly. Ray Ray McLeod had a great season. I don't know. Who's you know? that? Say who's that? Ray Ray McLeod. So. So I, I, I would say, like, saying Chase Claypool is, is you know, a great wide receiver. Saying, like, you know, Jalen Brown's a great, you know, two guard or small forward or whatever he is for Boston. You know, kind of overrated. He's really going to do this? <laughs> yeah. He's better than Chase Claypool. I don't, I, I don't know if this is risky just putting this on the screen, but I'm giving it to you, Nate, since it's uh, your birthday no. week. Uh, Dinosaur uh, said, Nate, it, my it, girlfriend said you look cute tonight. I, I, you know, we, uh, hopefully that doesn't create any, you know, arguments tension. for you. An if, argument it, tonight. It, it, well, it, she's it, the one that said it. You know, it My it, bad. It, I guess he could. Yeah, if you want to, you know, hit up my DM and I, I, I can kind of coach you on how to be a pimp at forty four. <laughs> you know, I, I can do those things for you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> oh man, goodness gracious. But yeah, I'm interested to see what happens uh with J Boo. There's a four some a lot of former. I, I hope I hope Jameis, you know, I don't you know, I hope he gets another real opportunity. You know, I think that you know he sat behind Breeze his final year. I think he learned a lot. You know, I I would have liked to see him in a full year with Sean Payton's office. I think that you know, we, we talked about it. I think a couple times on here that we all felt that the Saints would have been firmly in the playoffs had had Jameis not gotten hurt. They're what four and one when he got hurt. I think they were uh, five and two. Yeah, you know they, you know he was playing really well against Tampa that game when he got hurt. You know, just a freak injury. Um, that I I I really hope he gets a, a real opportunity because I think that you know he busted his his, his ass to get in a great shape and, and to get ready for this past season. And, you know, I, I, I do think that, you know, the Steelers do kind of make sense coming off of, uh, you know, Ben Ro- Roethlisberger. And then I, I, I'm, I'm not a believer that, you know, Kenny Pickett is, is a guy that should be taken high in the draft. I think that the quarterback draft, you know, I think Sam Howell is going to be a good pro. It's bleak. I don't think it's a great draft. So, you know, I, I think that you go after Jameis, who's still young, can give you five, six, mm-hmm. seven years or whatever, and, and then you go from there. I, I, I don't think, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't think Pittsburgh is in a rebuild mode, you know. I, I, I think that you can get a guy like Jameis and, and still be a, a perennial playoff team. I, you know, Tom, Tomlin's a good coach, man. You know, so it's, it's a good, it's a good organization. So I would like to see him in something like that with with Tomlin. Sadly, Jameis isn't competing in the playoffs this year, but there is a handful, a lot of Florida State Seminoles former guys coming in to uh, play this upcoming weekend. A win for their team would be a berth to the upcoming Super Bowl that will be in Los Angeles this year, which is probably going to be a fun one, definitely if the Rams do end up winning. But there's a handful of n- names like Cam Akers, Jalen Ramsey, 
You've got Joshua Kando, Derek Naughty from the Chiefs, along with Roderick Johnson. So I was about to say, name, uh, the, name the teams that these players are on for the people that don't know. Yeah, so if you don't know, case. yeah, if you don't know, we'll start off with number one, Auden Tate uh, is with the Bengals. And so as we know, he's fighting in the AFC Championship. You've got Cam Akers over there with the Rams teaming up with Jalen Ramsey. Uh, the Chiefs include former Knowles Joshua Kando along with Derek Nadi and Roderick Johnson. Um, then you've also got Ryan Izzo who was uh, over there at Tennessee Titans. They lost, obviously, so not competing this upcoming weekend, but he did play in a divisional round there in the AFC. Um, but, yeah, Auden Tate actually just got cleared to come back, so I'm interested to see if he gets any playing time in this AFC championship. I mean, you look at their room right now. So, yeah. So in Cincinnati, loaded. it is Pretty, loaded. That, that is a wide receiver room that is loaded, not Pittsburgh. You got Jamar Chase, who clearly is probably going to be competing with Justin Jefferson as the next top wide receiver in the, in the NFL. You have T. Higgins, who is a great number two. You have, um, what's his face? Boyd. Tyler, is yeah. it Tyler Boyd? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know a, a, as a third wide receiver, you have Auden Tate, who's played really well. But he hasn't been given a ton of opportunities. You know that is a deep wide receiver room, dude. Like that is what I think the Steelers wish they had. I think (laughs) any team wishes they had. Nate, don't even put on my Steelers. I think any team would kill that. Good running back and a good tight end too. Yep. They got it. You know. Well, well, let's talk about their offensive line. I mean, yeah, that's not the greatest. That's probably going to be a problem. Are you sitting back like by your wall, Dustin? You just I guess I'm sitting back a little bit here. You want me to there we go. Yeah, come a little bit help. closer to the mic. Yeah, bring the mic back with you. I know it swings back. You can lean back like this. So so for all the listeners, oh. um the reason why Dustin's not on camera is because his, over. his room is under construction after getting blasted last week for having the worst background. So for real, man. You know, he he's for real. doing some paint refresh, hanging up some pictures. You know, it, it's gonna be a, a big that's kind of step one of our of our boneless buddies rollout is, is what he's done with his room. So, this whole renovation project. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, you guys just don't understand how quickly boneless buddies is going to just rocket into the. It's going to be in Ground. China. It's going to no. be in China, man. Like you're going to let China get a hold of it. Absolutely, man. You know, and how much have, they pay. I mean, I know. Yeah. I mean, my mind just. Know churning about what we can do over there, man. In China? Scratches help us. Yes. Yes, Cam is holding on to the ball, man. Uh, yeah, no, that was a tough game for Cam Akers and Jalen, uh, th- too. That, that was a great play by Dominican Sue, though. You know, that was just... Yeah. You know, that was a... That one, you don't ever want to fumble the ball. Yeah, I understand that. But that was a great play by Sue. Um, the, the other fumble, though, late in the game, I, I was like, damn, man, you know. Bust his ass to get back, and looks like he might cost his team, you know, a collapse. But you know, we'll see. That, back. That's always kind of that's always kind of been his, his his Achilles heel, you know, which you know is <laughs> you know is fumbling. Same thing <laughs> at Florida State, you know, had fumbles. So yeah, gotta yeah. fix that shit because he played yeah. really well. Otherwise, you know, mm-hmm. he. Yeah, those two fumbles, you know, all what they are, but you know, he's come back like a freaking freight train. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And people harping and getting mad at Jalen trashing him and everything. God forbid he have one slip up. God forbid against a, one of the best wide receivers in the league. God forbid that happened, right? Uh, but also, but I do say that was that was that was just a great play. I mean, yeah, also really great route there. Also Mike, Okay, so also, I don't think that Ramsey expected that pass, for one. Two, um, his feet got caught up towards the the end of that play, which took him out of it. Um, But that was a great route by by Evans, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's just a great, 
great play call, great route by Mike Evans. He's done that hundreds of times before. I can, I can Mike put Evans a, does. I can put a 20 minute video of Deion Sanders getting beat. You know, the 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 greatest corner of all time. You know, let, let's just all relax on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everyone gets beat. It's how you respond and the consistency. Of, you know, I think people are talking about it just just damn near. When's the last time you, you saw Jalen Ramsey give up a play like that? I, I honestly, very I honestly, rare. That's why it's so big. I, I, I honestly That's... don't know. I honestly, yeah. I honestly don't know. Like I, I like for Two real, I ago, cannot maybe. think of him getting beat beat deep like that. I don't, I don't even think Mac, maybe Matt Cav had it one on him two years ago, but I mean, that's the thing though. That's why it gets talked about so much because it's very rare to see, you know, it did sure didn't happen with the Jags, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, except for, never mind. I'm not going to say big Ben throwing all over him. Cause that didn't work out really well either. No, that didn't work out either. That... <laughs> it really, it really didn't work out good at all. <laughs> no, no I, I, I mean, you know, I I I, I want to see Cam and uh, Jalen, you know, win win one. Yeah. Plus, I just absolutely. want to listen to Jalen Ramsey talk shit after winning the Super Bowl. I think it'd be just absolutely. It'd be gold. <laughs> it'd be great. It'd be great too for just the brand of Florida State recruiting mm-hmm. everything imaginable. Um, and plus, I, I think I would like a four. I think I'd like a Rams versus Chiefs in this one. Just more Knowles in it, the better. I think it's just better. I don't even know how 49ers are in this, but because they're they can healthy. run the damn ball. 49ers are healthy now, finally. Um, they play good defense and they, they run the ball run. well. Uh, same thing with, with the Rams. You know, the Rams are playing pretty good defense. Um, you know, Beckham has stepped up, which, you know, just makes that a whole different offense. And, and the I came in who's running on, on, Healthy legs and, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was 49ers Bengals, man. You know, two six mm-hmm. seeds, you know, coming in and they're both playing well. But, you know, Mahomes, man. Don't want it. Mahomes, man. You know, can never it's count him out. Again. Yes, Sorry, he, I'm chilling. I'm getting Jameis yeah, next season, anyways. Win it all. We were talking about that at work, Dustin, just how, it, you know, at some point, you know, when when the Chiefs are what like two and four, whatever the record was at some point, it, it, it was just a matter of time before Mahomes kind of hit, hit his groove, and he's fully in his bag right now, man. Yeah, he got his rhythm back, and that's all that matters. You're, when you got to yep. be playing your best football at this time of year, that's exactly what he's doing. I I didn't think anything of those struggles in the first couple of games because you know you've seen it throughout his career. He's an elite quarterback, sure. Some guys are going to make mistakes every now and then, especially when you're that good. You're going to force some things that other players might not do, but he's learned from it. And I mean, what can you say? Dude's playing phenomenal, but I'm taking Cincinnati. Uh, yeah, I know. Hey, what are you, our picks? Because you, well, well, you picked Cincinnati because that was your your sleeper team when, when that's we my sleeper all team. Yep. <laughs> no, man, I, I, I'm yeah, I'm gonna pick happen. Kansas City in, in a. In a game that we just kind of saw with Buffalo, um, you know, I, I think the Bengals will put points up, but I, I think Mahomes will be tough to beat at home, man. You know, he's just on a different level right now. And, and you know, I, I think the Rams, I think the defense kind of wins out. I think that, you know, I think that the Rams have a better offense in terms of the ability to score more consistently. I think that, you know, the 49ers uh, as good as they can run the ball. Um, you know, if they are running the ball, well, I think they kind of try to facilitate or have to f- facilitate a lot with Debo Samuel. Um, who, by the way, did really well. From our, who did really well for my fantasy team this year. Thank you, Debo. Um, <laughs> he got banged but, up last week though. Yeah. It, it, that's exactly what I was about to say, but he, he got banged up last week and apparently um, Trent Williams, uh, all pro left tackle has not practiced this week. So that's a problem going they've, against they've that. Had some injury. Sorry to yeah. interrupt. They've had some injuries at corner too. Yeah. But you know, that's that time of year. Everyone's hurt. That, you know, everyone's hurt, but you know, for your all pro left tackle to not be practicing going up against that, you know, a rejuvenated Von Miller and Aaron Donald in, in a, 
a Rams defense that, you know, situationally are playing really well. Mm-hmm. It's going to be tough, man. You know, all, all signs are pointing to Rams Chiefs, but as we've seen in this playoff, man, you know, it hasn't always gone as, as you expect. So I wouldn't be surprised if 49ers and or Bengals win. Mm-hmm. Just being a Steelers fan, screw the uh, Bengals. Uh, so I've got to go Chiefs and then Rams. So that's what that's just all I got to say about it. Rams, but, Bengals. Shut what's up. It, what's it? Four years in a row now for Mahomes in the AC champ in the championship game. I don't even want to talk about it. They're getting their three, time. Yeah. I, yeah, I still don't have Aaron Rodgers. In the first time. Mm-hmm. I, I still don't have Aaron Rodgers or um, Jameis on my team yet. So just let me get some time. Let me get some time. It, it, it's Mahomes. And the it's Mahomes' time till it's not, bro. Get well, it's it. not. Well, then next year it'll be not because I'll Get have used one to it. too. I'll have Joe one Burrow two. taking that crown. <laughs> not even worried. <laughs> not even worried about the Bengals. It was fun while it lasted. It was fun while it lasted. It's over. Uh, shout out to. You, uh, it, 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 wait, 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 wait. Okay, I, I, I'm from outside Cincinnati. I've always supported the Bengals. Um, <laughs> what? What? You're a Bears fan. What are you talking about? I am, you but I, I got to support the Bengals. But at, <laughs> being in that conference or that division, man, still has got to worry about Baltimore. Baltimore is going to get this shit straight with Lamar Jackson. I don't think okay? he's going to get it. I'm not worried about him. And, and, and Cleveland. Not with TJ Watt on my that, team. Yeah, that tie that, that, that of the sack record got him a great divisional round loss, man. Awesome. Woo. Well, there's a reason why we're making some changes. Definitely in the quarterback department. Okay. And offensive line. I'm not worried about Lamar Jackson. I'm not worried my about whole point Baker. Is that, Burrow, my I whole am point because is of the Bengals, wide receiver room he has. The Bengals aren't their only worry just in that division alone. Mm, if so. they fix offensive line, man, they, they're they definitely going to be a team to – I mean, mm-hmm. they beat us both, both times this past season, so definitely respect to them. But, yep. you know. Not too worried. <sighs> Got to be honest. Not too worried. Uh, shout out to uh, Mr. Dossie. Lawrence Dossie. We didn't talk about this earlier, but oh, wow, this kind of came out of nowhere. I wasn't I wasn't really expecting. I thought that maybe he wouldn't be done coaching. Um, but shout out to former Noel Lawrence Dossie, also former coach. He just picked up a job as a wide receivers coach at Appalachian State. Interesting there. Shout uh, out to uh, uh, Do- I'm, I'm gonna Mr. Withhold Dossie. Comment. I'm going to withhold comment. Okay. You withhold it. Hold on to it. Contain it. Keep it in. I, I, I'll contain it. You know, I don't want to be <laughs> labeled a hater. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I mean, it, it's, his, it's his first coaching job uh, in nearly five years. So yep, that, that, that's all you have to say. I, I'm not. I'm not I, Last time he yeah. worked was with Jimbo Fisher. At Florida State in 2017. Uh, Jake I, 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 I don't think that he could have been removed from the Moore Center any quicker than than, when, than you know. I thought you were Jimbo comment. Fisher. No, yeah, I I'm talking you about Lawrence Dossie. Oh, you commented. <laughs> I can't Jake not. Okay, let's move uh, on. I know it's hard for you to. That's why. That's <laughs> but. Dustin always eggs you on a little bit. Uh, Sean Payne also has me blocked, Jake. So uh, well, we're in the I, club now. I, 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 I'm going to tell you what's going to happen with Sean Payne. Okay. What's he going to do? He's going to go be a commentator for Fox for one year. He's going to take over Troy Aitman. Going to realize he doesn't like it. And then he's going to go to Chicago. And be <sighs> the, then he's going to be the next coach of the Bears. They're going to fire Nagy mid, you know. They fired him. I, I, I needed to happen. Okay, you got. <laughs> <That man>. So <laughs> they're gonna have a fourth year firing of whoever the new coach. Yes. Yeah. Fire him. Fire Wasn't that the fire Packers? Him. Yes. That was a fire Packers him. offense. Bring Sean Payton in. Or am I wrong? And, and then two years Super Bowl. Never mind. I'm thinking someone else. Sorry. That was Matt Aberfluss. Whatever. I sorry. I don't know how to say his last name. The former uh, 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 Colts defensive coordinator. What, what are wonder, your thoughts on that? I wonder how much money Fox is uh, offering Sean Payton for him to. A lot of money. Surprisingly, step down. 
you know, you got to figure it's like the, you know, the, the John Gruden money, you know, the mm-hmm. 10, 11, 12 million dollars just to be an announcer. Michael, <laughs> Michael, you got to go to bed. <laughs> not if Baltimore picks up Antonio Brown, says Michael Carpenter. Don't even do it. Well, I, I, Logan would he hope l- that they pick up Antonio Brown. That guy's a cancer. Uh, yeah, helped me a ton, actually. The last team that Antonio Brown was on won the Super Bowl, so. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> the last that team that Antonio really Brown was on won the Super Bowl. Who? Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. Uh, last year. <laughs> All right, let's get to some basketball real quick and wrap this thing up. Oh God! Um, yeah. B- before oh, God we get into basketball, right. I do want to say that I told Austin that they were <laughs> going to beat Duke and lose to Georgia Tech. Mm. And I forgot that, was that on was... the podcast. Yes. So we can clip that and go find yeah. it. We can find that and clip it. You won't go clip it. That's too much work. That was an ugly loss, though. Yeah, Florida State falls to Georgia Tech and Atlanta. So VZ every time by he fourteen attends, uh, by every fourteen time VZ, points. VZ's no longer allowed to attend any Florida State athletic event. We figured it out. We kind of got that written down. It's done. He can no longer attend them because I think he's had no wins. Contractually obligated to not attend any more FSU live events. And you like, and I like how VZ now. I mean, our our lead basketball writer isn't here after Florida State's extremely embarrassing loss. He's not here tonight. Just didn't want to show up. He said he couldn't find Wi-Fi. You know, he couldn't go on LTE for like. 15 minutes to give us the latest on basketball or anything. And he also didn't give you shoes. He didn't even, you know, he's the plug for shoes. He works at a shoe mm-hmm. store. No shoes for you, Nate, on your birthday. Yeah, How uh, messed up is that? Pr- pretty much he, he shouldn't be allowed on here anyway. So just for that alone. <laughs> yeah, he's suspended from <laughs> yeah. the spear. Yeah. But yeah, Florida State loses to he's Georgia on, Tech. He's on administrative leave. Yeah, Florida State loses to Georgia Tech, seventy-five to sixty-one. Um, at least on Saturday, Florida State did beat Miami, though. But man, I don't know if Florida State going to sneak into this March Madness or what, D'Lo? Uh, they're stretching themselves thin here on their chances of getting in. I don't know how it's going to work. I mean, it's another Q three loss, if I'm correct, right? Yeah, and I mean, right now, 13-6, and six, the six-game winning streak was nice. You got some quality wins in there, beating Duke, obviously. You beat Louisville. You beat Miami twice. So those were a couple big wins. But then losing this one to Georgia Tech, it, it really does hurt the resume, I think. Florida State's probably right there on the bubble. And, you know, these last five or six weeks or so are, are going to – they're going to have to win some games and they can't, they can't really have another loss like this to Georgia tech. And when they get to the ACC tournament, they're probably going to need to win a minimum of two games as well to make sure that they have a comfortable shot of making it into the big dance. But really last night and against this, and in the second half against Miami, I kind of thought that that played into last night, just turnovers. I mean, you had 17 turnovers last night. You came into the game as um, the leader in the ATC in steals, only forced, I think it was two steals all night against Georgia Tech. How many threes they ended up giving up? Only, actually, I was kind of surprised. Only 10 out of uh, 27. It, well, it they, felt like they, they hit made eight, a lot well, more than 10. Well, they hit eight in the first half. That's why it seemed so high. You know, that first 20 minutes, they were what, like eight or 13 or something really stupid like that. And then yeah, the free throw. Own... And then the free throw. Disparity was just a freaking joke. It's twenty four to sixteen. Mm. It's not that bad because when you when you think about it, it at one point it was zone like, defense. Florida State couldn't penetrate. They were getting to the rim, not very often at all. So every team's going to play zone moving forward for against FSU. Mm-hmm. Florida State's got a big game. Coming up against Virginia Tech, that's going to be on Saturday at 3 p.m., and then they'll go on to face Clemson at Clemson on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. on February 2nd. So, good couple matchups up next for uh, Florida State. I do remember Austin coming on here and saying, you know, after facing Miami, you go on a nice little stretch here, and, and you know, you should be able to get some good wins too. But sadly, he overthought Georgia Tech. I think, yeah, I remember if I, 
remember correctly, he said that Georgia Tech is awful. Said they were going to handle them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, there's no there's no shocker here that why he didn't show up this week and head behind and didn't want to come on here. But we'll make sure to bring this back up when he's on here next week for sure to address what he said and the blasphemy. <laughs> and he lied to all of us too. So. Brutal, brutal, and and ruined Nate's birthday. So mm-hmm. bad week, very bad week for VZ. Wish him the best. Um, I think that's going to wrap everything up. Like I said earlier, we talked with Fuller, and hopefully we'll be able to do a little pop-up show before everything becomes official with him at Florida State. But Corey Fuller expected to take um, a staff job over there and join Mike Norvell and his staff in Tallahassee and get over there inside the moor. So, uh, and and we'll, we'll know next week the uh... – the features the schedule. Of o- uh, we'll know the oh. schedule, and then mm-hmm. we'll also know the features of uh, Odell Higgins and Ron Dugans. Yeah, is there? <laughs> we'll definitely discuss that. That's definitely a good conversation there. Let's discuss this. Yeah, this is Stan R. Asking why is Dustin talking about my my avatar? I don't know. Why is Dustin shaped like a donut? Sexiest know, donut ever. I'd probably be a glazed. All right. Yeah. <laughs> We've got to get off of here. I don't even things are coming into my mind that I never maybe a, maybe a nice cream filled donut. All right. Gotta get out of here. Gotta bounce. Uh but yeah. Appreciate everybody coming to hanging out with us this evening. If you're on YouTube right now, before we pop off, smack that like button. We definitely appreciate it. If you're on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, subscribe, so then you'd be notified every time we release a new episode. We had close to probably I didn't check today, but close to almost twenty thousand views and listens uh, in the last episode. So definitely appreciate all of y'all uh for hanging out with us the last couple of weeks. So I know it's kind of kind of thin and dry right now not a lot of stuff going on but we'll try to keep you guys entertained hopefully we don't have to bring back some of our segments that we did um two off seasons ago because that was uh that was scary yeah that was a little scary that was a little scary time but uh yeah any last thoughts uh birthday boy any last thoughts nate you you can't say Mm -hmm. oh you can't say hunter anymore about being number you know best player you've ever seen well, he is, so that's not going to change. I'm, I, I, I'm not going to change that. But um, that it's going to be interesting uh, on Twitter this this week when um, you know we get, I guess, the final word on, on Dugans and, and Odell, and eager to see the schedule and see how that how Florida State will get you know pent over by the ACC this year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, going to be we'll... some random three game road trip and. Late October, November. Michael, you, Michael, you you, you got to you, you missed the early talk of early parties. Part. You no, know, you know we talked about that just to start the show. Here, let me give yeah. you one. Let me give it to you one more time. Ready? Boom. <laughs> the avatar that uh, you know stock photos at its best. So you gotta. I need, I need more original stuff there. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> now we've got to get off of here. The day is over. We're done. We're wrapping this up. Appreciate everybody listening. Everybody have a great, phenomenal weekend. And next time we talk to you, we'll have a schedule to talk about. So looking forward to it. Everybody have a great weekend. Peace. Mama told me not to sell work.